It's an important time of the year. As many schools as we deal with, between those four conferences, SEC, ACC, Big Ten, and Big East, in addition to Notre Dame, there's a lot of schools to get out and see, so you got to start early. As much as it helps us to see what the fan base feels like, what's going on on campus, get a temperature gauge for what kind of team we might be dealing with late in the year, it's as important to talk to them about what's going on here in Orlando in terms of new fields in the stadium, which is very, very important, state-of-the-art field service center now, the renovations and the major construction that's going on and what that's going to provide to the fan. All those types of things are important to communicate to each other, so you got to start very early. The other contacts that uh, Dan and I made was Sally Mason, the university president. We got to say hi to her on the way up. Gary Barta, we spent a little bit of time in his booth at the end of the first quarter. Coach Ferentz, I had a chance to meet with at the end of the game, and a lot of assistant coaches went through there. And there was probably 10 of those guys, and eight out of the 10 praised our bowl. It was pretty cool, said that that was the best bowl that they'd been to. Coach Moore announced that the anticipated attendance at the game was a sellout of 101, 823. But the university indicated there was about 140,000 people in Tuscaloosa, 20,000 of which was Penn State folks. And if you were there, you would believe it because Friday they were just all over the streets. South Carolina is, of course, a great prospect. We'd all love to have South Carolina here knowing the kind of fans that they uh, bring with them. But they've got to play Auburn at Auburn, Florida at Florida, Alabama uh, at home, and Arkansas at home, plus Clemson. If somehow they could win, uh, manage to lose uh, only two ball games and finish uh, in second or third place in the uh, Eastern Division of the conference, uh, win 10 and 2, that'd be so, a great prospect for our ball game. This is the 2010 Selection Committee kickoff dinner, and we are so delighted you're here. I'm Paul Kennedy with Sun Sports, Fox Sports Florida. Uh, annually, I'm asked to do this, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, not only do I get to share the evening with you, but Coach Lee Corso is here once again to regale us. Lee's been a tremendous part of our family here at Florida Center Sports and in Orlando as a community. I mean, he's, he's an institution. And the fact that we get to enjoy him and that relationship is very, very special. I made a prediction at the beginning of the year that Alabama would run the table, including Florida, when they got the Angels. But then, if, if things go the way, way I think, it might, Florida's got a shot at the SEC title. Florida might be able to catch them. Florida might be the only team that can beat them around here because they've got athletes that can run. And, um, but I was tremendously impressed with Alabama. This guy Kelly's a good coach. He's a lot better coach than Weiss. And he can coach it. That's a good Notre Dame team. And I don't know, they, they play Michigan State this weekend. And I think they got a shot at them, but I really like the way he's got them, that Notre Dame team playing. I would not, I would not doubt if they don't win nine games this year, and that would be a real good thing for them. Uh, for Michelle, for Steve Hogan, for all of us, uh, we could have Notre Dame here uh, against a team from the Atlantic Coast Conference, and absolutely would sell out the Citrus. Well, whoever they play, they'll beat Notre Dame. Will beat them in the ACC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When you're picking number three in the ACC, number two in the SEC, number two in the Big Ten, number two in the Big East, and you have the first selection at Notre Dame in the non-BCS world, how can we not? I fully expect those teams all to be nine-win, ten-win teams, ranked in the top 25, and, and, and that's what's important to us. We want fan bases that are excited. We want to show them why Orlando's the number one bowl destination in the world, and that's what we expect, what they expect, and that's what we're going to deliver.